Now, one thing a lot of people have asked about is running conduit. Um, as we said before, we're going to try to keep all of our wire runs running on the inboard side of each one of these holes, so there's nothing really on the outboard. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Uh, making the new floor for the nap desk. Trying to get this set up right. Eventually, it needs to be flush with this floor, uh, so it looks like it's just a continuation on there. What I'm going to do is try to trace this from the underside. So instead of being just a, a or straight edge. There's a curve to it and a curve here, and I want to make sure that I'm able to follow that uh, to make sure that I have like, a nice little ramp of transition um, there. So we've got a new Sharpie in here. Not a lot of space. that I glassed in last night, uh, the base of that, trim that down so it's uh, the thickness of this, which is 5 8 so 16 millimeter thick. Drop these, not exactly 16 millimeters, but enough that it's going to bring it to so flush with this edge here. So by using this level, we can see that, maybe hard to see on camera, but this is falling right level with this surface, with this top surface. So we know that is right where we want the top of our new floor to be. And we know the thickness is 16 millimeters, so of course we drop it down now. This line, 16 millimeters, and we should have our cut points then for these little string pieces. So we got our mark there. All we need to do is Line that up with that, lower our level, and there's our new cut line. So either side we now have exactly level position, uh, right where that floor should be. So I'm going to cut right along there, and then our new piece, once we trim that edge, should plop right down and give us a nice flat surface. Uh. Looks like I cut it slightly off um, these support pieces. I am probably a millimeter, millimeter and a half low on the outboard side. Um, so before I bond it in place, I'll shim that up and get it so it's right. And of course, once we have more flooring on, or when we have, if we do foam or something like that as a flooring surface, that's going to hide all of this stuff as well. But you don't want it to be, you know, feel like you're walking over a bumpy road either. Now, one thing a lot of people have asked about is running conduit. Um, as we said before, we're gonna try to keep all of our wire runs running on the inboard side of each one of these holes. So there's nothing really on the outboard. So we don't really don't have to worry about that at all. But one of the things I tried to explain, and it's kind of hard to visualize, is where we're going to be running these wires. This big area here, 
running fore and aft is all going to be wire and plumbing runs in there. We'll have a false back on the back of this cabinet and everything will be back there. Um, gives us huge amount of space for it so that won't be a problem at all and what I'm going to do is run conduit. If you see there's still a lot of room to be able to get in from kind of this side and what I need to do though is I need to glass this panel into place first. I want to make sure, my, my priority is to make sure that I get really good glass work in here. Then I'll run the conduit, just drill holes basically with a hole saw, run the conduit through for the wire runs. Reason why I'm not running the conduit first is it wouldn't really allow me to tape well up in this area um, as is needed if I have those holes and have that conduit already in there. So this is uh, an approach, a way to make it. Over on this part, this side over here, this is where the steps will be up. The top step will be basically parallel with this, so the wires again can run through here, and then an entertainment setup um, over here. On this side, it's all that same thing. It's all underneath cabinetry and underneath stairs, so they're huge arteries um, going fore and aft that are going to be great for any of those things that we do need to run that direction. Uh, the, the hardest part is going to be running things side to side, so to transverse. We have to either do it through that big panel back there, ignore the mess, um, please, through this little panel through here, or forward of the bulkhead here, which is more difficult because those are all watertight sections, so then we need to do a few extra things to it. So we'll see. We'll see how that all runs. Um, uh, majority of the stuff will be concentrated hopefully on this side of the boat which is where we'll have the battery pack right here so majority of those things should be over here on the other side are just lights and um, um, water pumps and that kind of stuff so it's not huge draw items quite some time since you've seen me working up here in the forward bunk last we left off I think I was like just starting to add some coats to bulkheads four and five and sand them off and uh, two of the reasons that I haven't really picked up the camera in a couple of weeks is because one it's pretty repetitious work all I do is I add a little bit of fairing compound wait for it to cure sand it off add some take it off and the other reason is because I am still kind of like honing my skills and so I want to wait until I get a little bit better before showing it on camera because I definitely don't want anyone to think that this is a how-to guide, at least yet, because I am still learning the process. But within that time, here is where I've gotten. As you can tell on bulkhead five here, I am still trying to do a nice transition between where all of our extra fiberglass is that's supporting the opening for the door and coming down and I haven't really sanded it yet. I've totally lost my focus on this bulkhead and pretty much our supporting bulkhead four because I am just about ready for paint to go into these cabinets and so I really wanted to focus on them. And you can see in here I have gone through and pretty much smoothed out that surface that was an issue before. I've gone through and added all the coves and of course fared the uh, upper portions of these. So I think within the next couple of days we can get our first coats of buildable primer in here. I'm just going through and fixing like last little touches again. I know these are cabinets and they really shouldn't matter in fact at the Max Cruise Yard to save weight because again this is a performance camera and you want to keep it as light as you can. Uh, they just paint right over the glass but one of our pet peeves from our last build on Elements the Aluminum boat was that the uh, interior cabinets weren't as finished as we wanted them to be. So yeah, we're going to sacrifice the weight and try and finish these out as best as I can without like adding too much weight or spending too much time. 
But as you can see, some of these areas, I really didn't do well with the cove. It's kind of all bumpy there. So I'm kind of going through right now. I've started working on some of the others. Just giving a sand and I'm gonna do one last pass with my coving tool, fill in like any little holes. And that's just a lost cause. I can't fix that. But we are almost to the paint stage, fingers crossed, and then I can forget about these, but basically move into the master head and do the same thing there. build does is design a boat for the way Jess and I sit which is very slouchy and what that means is when we're leaning back we really we can't see our sight lines really low so we can't see out any of the windows so what we're doing is we are raising our seat uh, it, putting like basically a little stage area underneath the table for a footrest area and raising our seat up. So when we're leaning back, we're gonna have great visibility all the way around. That's impacted our navigation desk. So the nav is right here. We confirmed that after going aboard the Max Cruise in Vietnam that we do like the way that their nav desk was set up. But if we raise up the seating area, we also need to raise up the nav desk. What that has done is this whole area, this bench behind us, which is actually from the inside is a uh, hanging closet here. This can now be part of our nav desk. So we can make it a nice big L-shaped setup. Your legs will still go under here, so you'll have that in front of you, but you have this big working space over here. On the production Max Cruise, that's kind of just like a shelf, a storage area. For us, it's going to be an additional desktop area. But this is based on doing a 175 millimeter step. And so what we did is we're gonna raise that nav desk up seven inches as well. So we'll have that, that's gonna be in parallel with this. And we've lowered this just a little bit, ended up 25 millimeters down to get it so it's now gonna blend in with the nav desk. And that's what I'm currently working on. Well, inside the hull area, you can see I have glass that into place. This top is still loose. That was just basically cut to size a little bit ago. That area underneath here where the wire runs will be will still be accessible. What the project is now is going to be finishing off this area. So I've got to extend that up to reach this height, mimic this height right over here. Uh, that's going to be the face for, for the cabinet here. Then also make extensions so it sticks out a little bit uh, along here and along this edge and even a center piece. Instead of going with sliding doors along here, we have decided that we, we like the structure, we like the looks of an opening cabinet door here. We had to make sure that they could accommodate and swing open fully. Uh, Daggerboard wasn't in place, so that's going to make them 500 millimeters wide and we'll do a center style basically just to fill in that area, that gap. But uh, again, these are some of the decide, design decisions that we've had to come up with just recently. is sitting tight in there. I used uh, just a hot glue gun to put these little pieces to hold everything into place. Last night I just quickly bonded this into position here. So now what I can do is go through and knock out all of these little hot glue pieces. This whole section will come out and I know now that 
this piece and this piece are on the same plane, so they're, they're flush with each other, as is the top section. So when I glass all this stuff in, I know that in the future, when the doors actually come into place, everything's going to set right. Uh, Now it is time for our shower pan to go down, which is one of the last few molded pieces we have from the factory. So now that the dagger board case is in place and the fuel tank has been sealed up, this is the next piece to go down. It is all prepped. So let's get it in place. And this is one area that we have kind of varied from the original plans. The plans called for the fuel tank to go on this inboard side. Um, from here to basically this part uh, uh, stern. The idea is in case you were to ever hit anything with a dagger board case itself, it's on the inboard side of the hull and it's not going to crack, it's not going to cause any problems. And this way that they're building on that at the Max Cruise factory is this way. Problem is, is that this is a fuel tank that Matt and Jess are building. So the probability that there eventually will be an issue in case there is, is, is high enough that we wanted it to be accessible. If we take this molded shower piece and put it over the top of our fuel tank, it's gonna be very difficult to then cut it out later if we need to. So the idea was to get the weight a little bit further forward. So this is forward of the boat. This is midship position, basically middle of the boat. It brought the weight further forward and it also allowed it that this area right here is going to be stairs leading down, there's going to be a bulkhead here that leads in, but this floor will always be accessible. It's something that we can always get to, so in case there's an issue with that coating that I did on the paint on the inside or, or anything else, we can cut this area open and gain access to it again. So that was, that was my first idea. The other thing with, with doing that is it changed location of a few things. Max Cruise is putting the holding tank, they're building the bathroom or the toilet holding tank right in this area. They're putting seacocks down here to be able to drain that out as needed. Since we, we are enclosing that and making that a fuel area, we needed to change things around. So what we've done instead is we moved all of this stuff further aft. Uh, the holding tank is gonna be built into this wall here. The toilet will be sitting right into this area. And from the outside, this area from here is still accessible. So it's something that you can still get through the floor. It's actually a pretty large opening. I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, we can put the seacock down here for the toilet drain. We can put the shower sump, that, that Vita's uh, shower sump set up, which will also act as kind of a bilge pump for this area as well. That will be down in this area. These things are all very accessible then. And it's a short run because the shower drain is right here. So that goes into that. The holding tank will be right here, which will feed down into that through hole. It's a direct access to it. And I think for, for Jess and I, it's gonna be the best solution. Gonna allow us the easiest maintenance later on. And uh, quite frankly, just the installation is gonna be a lot easier too. So a big part of this is making sure we uh, have proper drainage. This is a wet head, so the shower head will be right about here, spraying into this whole surface, so everything gets wet. We want to make sure that it's all draining to that point. That's where the shower uh, little sunk will be. So. so that's all right. So this will slope down here and out there. Should be sloping down this way. Perfect. Slopes there and there. So it needs to come aft here slightly. And less slightly. <laughs>
pick this up and set it in. Don't let it slide down there because otherwise it's going to take off over. Yep. Good job. Where is my wife at? Oh, there it is. Oh. Did it fall underneath or anything? I think I may have dropped the wedge that I was supposed to use for positioning into the webbing, but thankfully, so far this area is not fully closed because Matt's going to go below later and class it anyway, so. Nope, that's fully closed. Oopsie. Yeah, that area is inaccessible. Okay, so now we're, may, we may potentially forever have a wedge in there. One of these bouncing around. Oh. I just got so excited. There we go. Now we have a shower pan. Right, so you need gloves. Woohoo, that is one more piece permanently in place. One more piece that we don't have to move around and adjust. And we can get the bulkheads up soon and start defining this whole side too. So you're probably kind of wondering what we've done since we did have to stick in some of these wedges to get it to sit level. So with the extra thickened resin, kind of like went through and just filled some of the gaps here so that we can pull this out once that is dry without disturbing it. And fiberglass it. And fiberglass it. Because we have such good access over here, um, we decided to just use that total boat thickened resin because now I can glass it all the way around before these bulkheads get put on the side here but it's going to give actually quite a bit more rigidity and strength within this area so i think all in all ended up being the right decision for us